Luang Chang is a Chinese-born British writer now living in London, best known for her family autobiography Wild Swans, selling over 10 million copies worldwide but banned in the People's Republic of China. Her 832-page biography of Mao Zedong, Mao, The Unknown Story, written with her husband, the Irish historian John Halliday, was published in June 2005. Life in China, Chang was born March 25, 1952 in Yibin, Sichuan Province, China. Her parents were both Communist Party of China officials, and her father was greatly interested in literature. As a child she quickly developed a love of reading and writing, which included composing poetry. As party carders, life was relatively good for her family at first. Her parents worked hard, and her father became successful as a propagandist at a regional level. His former ranking was as a level 10 official, meaning that he was one of 20,000 or so most important carders, or gambu, in the country. The Communist Party provided her family with a dwelling in a guarded, walled compound, a maiden chauffeur, as well as a wet nurse and nanny for Chang and her four siblings. This level of privilege in China's relatively impoverished 1950s was extraordinary. Chang writes that she was originally named Er Hong, which sounds like the Chinese word for faded red. As communists were deep red, she asked her father to rename her when she was 12 years old, specifying she wanted a name with a military ring to it. He suggested Yong, which means martial affairs. Equals cultural revolution equals, like many of her peers, Chang chose to become a Red Guard at the age of 14, during the early years of the Cultural Revolution. In Wild Swans she said she was keen to do so, thrilled by my red armband. In her memoirs, Chang states that she refused to participate in the attacks on her teachers and other Chinese, and she left after a short period as she found the Red Guards too violent. However, a victim of the Great Cultural Revolution revealed that, rather than a witness, Chang is a direct attacker to her family, which was Ai Ling's family. The snuff bottle was not being broken, but taken away by Yung Chang the victim revealed. The failures of the Great Leap Forward had led her parents to oppose Mao Zedong's policies. They were targeted during the Cultural Revolution, as most high-ranking officials were. When Chang's father criticized Mao by name, Chang writes in Wild Swans that this exposed them to retaliation from Mao's supporters. Her parents were publicly humiliated a euro ink was poured over their heads, they were forced to wear placards denouncing them around their necks, kneel and gravel and to stand outside in the rain a euro followed by imprisonment, her father's treatment leading to lasting physical and mental illness. Their careers were destroyed, and her family was forced to leave their home. Before her parents' denunciation and imprisonment, Chang had unquestioningly supported Mao and criticized herself for any momentary doubts. But by the time of his death, her respect for Mao, she writes, had been destroyed. Chang wrote that when she heard he had died, she had to bury her head in the shoulder of another student to pretend she was grieving. She explained her change on the stance of Mao with the following comments. Chang's depiction of the Chinese people as having been programmed by Maoism would ring forth in her subsequent writings. Equals studying English equals the disruption of the university system by the Red Guards led Chang, like most of her generation, away from the political maelstroms of the academy. Instead, she spent several years as a peasant, a barefoot doctor, a steelworker and an electrician, though she received no formal training because of Mao's policy, which did not require formal instruction as a prerequisite for such work. The universities were eventually reopened and she gained a place at Sichuan University to study English, later becoming an assistant lecturer there. After Mao's death, she passed an exam which allowed her to study in the West, and her application to leave China was approved once her father was politically rehabilitated. Life in Britain equals Academic background equals. Chang left China in 1978 to study in Britain on a government scholarship, staying first in Soho, London. She later moved to Yorkshire, studying linguistics at the University of York with a scholarship from the university itself, living in Derwent College. She received her PhD in linguistics from York in 1982, becoming the first person from the People's Republic of China to be awarded a PhD from a British university. In 1986, 
she and John Halliday published MME Sun Yat-sen, a biography of Sun Yat-sen's widow. She has also been awarded honorary doctorates from the University of Buckingham, the University of York, the University of Warwick, and the Open University. She lectured for some time at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, before retiring in the 1990s to concentrate on her writing. Equals new experiences equals, in 2003, Luang Chang wrote a new foreword to Wild Swans, describing her early life in Britain and explaining why she wrote the book. Having lived in China during the 1960s and 1970s, she found Britain exciting. After the initial culture shock, she soon grew to love the country, especially its diverse range of culture, literature and arts. She found even colourful window boxes worth writing home about a Euro Hyde Park and the Kew Gardens were inspiring. She took every opportunity to watch Shakespeare's plays in both London and York. However she still has a special place for China in her heart, saying in an interview with HarperCollins, I feel perhaps my heart is still in China. Chang lives in West London with her husband, the Irish historian John Halliday, who specializes in Soviet history. She regularly visits mainland China to see her family and friends there, with permission from the Chinese authorities, despite carrying out research on her biography of Mao there. Equals celebrity equals, the publication of Yung Chang's second book Wild Swans made her a celebrity. Chang's unique style, using a personal description of the life of three generations of Chinese women to highlight the many changes that the country went through, proved to be highly successful. Large numbers of sales were generated, and the book's popularity led to its being sold around the world and translated into several languages. Chang became a popular figure for talks about communist China. And she has traveled across Britain, Europe, America, and many other places in the world. She returned to the University of York on June 14, 2005, to address the university's debating union and spoke to an audience of over 300, most of whom were students. The BBC invited her onto the panel of Question Time for a first ever broadcast from Shanghai on March 10, 2005, but she was unable to attend when she broke her leg a few days beforehand. Publications equals Wild Swans equals the international bestseller is a biography of three generations of Chinese women in 20th century China Euro her grandmother, mother, and herself. Chang paints a vivid portrait of the political and military turmoil of China in this period, from the marriage of her grandmother to a warlord, to her mother's experience of Japanese-occupied Jinsha during the Second Sino-Japanese War, and her own experience of the effects of Mao's policies of the 1950s and 1960s. Wild Swans was translated into 30 languages and sold 10 million copies, receiving praise from authors such as J. G. Ballard. It is banned in mainland China, though two pirated versions are available, as are translations in Hong Kong and Taiwan. Equals Mao, the unknown story equals. Chang's 2005 work, A Biography of Mao, was co-authored with her husband John Halliday and portrays Mao in an extremely negative light. The couple traveled all over the world to research the book, which took 12 years to write. They interviewed hundreds of people who had known Mao, including George Bush, Sr., Henry Kissinger, and Tenzin Gyatso, the Dalai Lama. Among their criticisms of Mao, Chang and Halliday argue that, despite his having been born into a relatively rich peasant family, he had little well-informed concern for the long-term welfare of the Chinese peasantry. They hold Mao responsible for the famine resulting from the Great Leap Forward and claim that he had exacerbated that famine by allowing the export of grain to continue when China had insufficient grain to feed its own people. They also claim that Mao had arranged for the arrests and murders of many of his political opponents, including some of his personal friends, and they argue that he was a far more tyrannical leader than had previously been thought. Mao, the unknown story became a bestseller with UK sales alone reaching 60,000 in six months. Academics and commentators wrote reviews ranging from praise to criticism. Professor Richard Baum said that it had to be taken very seriously as the most thoroughly researched and richly documented piece of synthetic scholarship on Mao. On the other hand, the Sydney Morning Herald reported that while few commentators disput, ed the subject, 
some of the world's most eminent scholars of modern Chinese history had referred to the book as a gross distortion of the records. Equals Empress Darjushksi equals. In October 2013, Chang published a new biography of Empress Darjushksi, who led China from 1861 until her death in 1908. Chang argues that Xi has been deemed either tyrannical and vicious, or hopelessly incompetent to Euro, or both, and that this view is both simplistic and inaccurate. Chang deeply admires Xi and portrays her as intelligent, open-minded, and a proto-feminist limited by a xenophobic and deeply conservative imperial bureaucracy. Although Xi is often accused of reactionary conservatism, Chang concludes that Xi brought medieval China into the modern age. Newspaper reviews have also been positive in their assessment. T. E. Ping Chen, writing in the Wall Street Journal, found the book packed with details that bring to life its central character. However, it has also received a fair amount of critical treatment in the academic world. Chang has made impressive use of the rapidly expanding range of published material from the imperial archives. But understanding these sources requires profound study of the context. Her claims regarding Shixia Euro unregistered trademark s important seem to be minted from her own musings, and have little to do with what we know was actually going in China. I am as eager as anyone to see more attention paid to women of historical significance. But rewriting Shixia's Catherine the Great or Margaret Thatcher is a poor bargain, the gain of an illusory icon at the expense of historical sense. Equals list of works equals, Lung Chang and John Halliday. Madame Sun Yat Sen, Sun Xing Ling. Penguin, ISBN 0 14 008455 X, Lung Chang, Wild Swans, Three Daughters of China. 2004 Harper Perennial Ed. ISBN 0 00 717615 5, Lung Chang, Lin Pan and Henry Tso, Another Province, New Chinese Writing from London. Lambeth Chinese Community Association, ISBN 0-9522973-0-2. Lung Chang and John Halliday, Mao, The Unknown Story. Jonathan Cape, ISBN 0-679-42271-4. Lung Chang, Empress Darjushksi, The Concubine Who Launched Modern China. ISBN 0224087436 References <laughs>